In times of old, if you wanted to transform something in 3D space in Game Maker, you would have most likely used the D3D transform functions. And as many of you are probably aware, those no longer exist in Game Maker Studio 2, which leaves the question of what do you do now? And the answer to that is matrices. And if matrices sound like something scary from linear algebra, that's because they are. But don't worry, the computer can do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. All you need to know is how to use it. So what I have here is a rather stripped down version of the last 3D Game Maker video that I made like two years ago. I cleaned up a little of the code that didn't work very well. Um, I got rid of some stuff that wasn't necessary. If you still have the code from the last tutorial video that I made about 3D and Game Maker, it should still work. Alternatively, if you want to download a clean copy, a clean air copy. I will try to remember to provide one. Anyway, what I am interested in doing is going into the game object object. And that's the, uh, that's the create event. And I'm going to increase the font size because I never remember to do that. And if you go into the draw event, you can see that I've got some matrix magic going on already. Although I don't believe I went into great detail about it in the other video or really explained what it did. I don't really want to call matrices the replacement for the D3D transform functions. They do the same job, but they do it at a somewhat more basic level, and you can use them in more or less the same way. Also, I should note, these are available in Game Maker Studio 1 as well, matrices. And if you want to use them instead of the D3D transform functions, which a number of people would recommend that you do, you have that option available to you. So I'm going to make, before I do anything else, this is a, this is a, a stationary version of the, uh, the Going Merry that I had zooming all over the place in that, in that little demo. You can see it's just sitting here and it's not moving around. That's fine. I'm going to make it bob up and down. Perhaps you can imagine it's a, a ship on, on the waves or something. So I'm going to make a local variable called, let's say, time. Actually, let's call it t, because short names for local variables are good for code organization. And time is going to be current time and let's take the, uh, how about the sign of current time? Current time is just a, a read-only variable. It's one of the timing variables that returns the number of milliseconds since the game has started. So that's a pretty good continuously increasing clock. And I'm going to say, uh, you can see down here at the bottom matrix build, it's in rather small letters. I will try to make it bigger. It takes nine arguments, x, y, z, x rotation, y rotation, z rotation, and x, y, and z scale. For the uh, the z position coordinate, I'm going to just say uh, time. I believe by default my z value is zero that I have assigned it, so this won't actually do anything anyway. I will leave it as it is for now. And let's run the game. And that's actually going to make it oscillate between zero and one, so you, you will hardly be able to see anything. Actually, you can see it bobbing up and down a little bit fast. All right, I was expecting the oscillation to be much more, uh, much smaller than that, but that works. You understand the point, hopefully. Now, let's say you want to combine these together. Um, I will, I will not make, I will make the position stand still, but, let, but let's make it rotate. And this won't be a sign function, but how about, let's say 20 degrees per second. So let's make this, uh, let's make the going mirror rotate around the, the up and down axis at a rate of 20 degrees per second. That shouldn't be too fast. It shouldn't be too insane or anything. And you can see it is now rotating. There's a joke to be made in there somewhere about what did Luffy do now, I'm sure. You can also see that the lighting is updating correctly, by the way. That's pretty cool. I have talked very little about lighting in, uh, in 3D and Game Maker Studio 2. I should probably do that someday. And just to make things exciting, let's, uh, let's combine a couple of these interesting translations together. Um, let's use both the sign value and the ever-increasing value for, uh, for this one. Uh, we can make it bob up and down. Oops, I need a plus sign in there. And let's also make it scale. Um, no, I, I already picked on the vertical axis for uh, the up-down axis for rotation. Let's 
to the x-axis for scale. And that should make things look adequately interesting. If I turn to face the camera, oh my god, you all right there? Good lord, okay, that's not normal. So that works well enough. If all you are interested in doing is scaling, rotating, and translating an object in 3D space, that's fine. You got what you came here for, and to be honest, you're probably feeling a little bit ripped off that you had to watch this entire video to learn about the matrix build function. But there are more things that you can do with matrices. If you remember the D3D transform functions, you probably remember combining transformations together. And you can do that with matrices as well. Although to be honest, the need to do that now is somewhat less since you can create the entire transformation matrix in just one function now as opposed to three. But given that you also save these matrices to variables, this means that you can build transformations and save them later. And do things akin to the, uh, the D3D transform stack that used to be available in old versions of GameMaker. I'm not going to get into using a, DS, a literal DS stack, one of these things, to, uh, to store push and pop transformations. Although if you're building an elaborate model with multiple moving parts and that sort of thing, you probably will want to do that. Hey. First I'm going to say matrix, uh, let's say translate, equals that. It's just going to be x, y, z, no rotation, and uniform scaling. Um, scaling of 1, so no scaling. Next I'm going to say matrix rotate. And it's going to have no translation, but instead... Um, Let's, let's rotate it around the y-axis this time, instead of around the x-axis, around the z-axis. I want to pick on different axes when I do this. That's the rotation, and uh, uniform scaling of 1. Uniform just means they're all the same. Uniform doesn't mean the scaling is 1. Why did, why did I say that a minute ago? And lastly, matrix scale. And I'm actually going to organize my code a little bit here so that it's easier to see what goes with what. Um, we're just going to break up these argument values a little bit so that you can see the groups of translation, rotation, and scaling. Scaling. No translation, no rotation, and the scaling can be... This T sign was a little bit much. I'm just going to... Uh, Let's make it half as fast. Let's pick on scaling on the y-axis as well. Just because I feel like it. So to combine these, you multiply them together. And if you've taken Algebra 2 in high school, you've probably just twitched uncomfortably when I said multiplying matrices. But fortunately, like I said at the beginning of the video, the computer is willing to do that for you. To get started, I'm going to say uh, var matrix... Uh, let's call it matrix 1. Since when do I give my variables meaningful names? And this is going to be matrix multiply. And we will start with matrix scale and multiply that against matrix rotate. Okay, you know, I'm not going to call this matrix 1. Let's call this matrix... Let's call it matrix SR for scale and rotate. And if... I were to pass that into the matrix set function. None of these functions do anything on their own. None of these affect the way that anything is drawn on their own. I should have mentioned this earlier. Matrix set takes a matrix that you have created, either with matrix build or matrix multiply, or one of the other matrix functions, and applies it. So when you call matrix multiply, this variable now contains a, a matrix, which is an array of 16 values. I'll get into that later. Hey. And matrix set applies that. So the going merry is now going to be drawn with those, uh, with that translation, with it rotating and and um, kind of, woo, okay, that's a little weird. And the lighting is actually acting up there. Okay, that's. You can see it's only being rotated and scaled. It's not being translated to the middle of the room like uh, like it was at the beginning. So if you want to apply the translation. Matrix, um, let's call it matrix final, because that's, uh, this is going to be the matrix that contains all three of these. 
we will want to multiply the previous matrix containing the scale and rotation information. Uh, we will essentially want to add in the translation matrix. And I'm going to, instead of applying the scaled and rotated matrix, I'm going to apply the final one. It's called multiplying the matrix, multiplying the matrices, but I find it can help people to think about this as adding them together instead, uh, because you have the, say, the rotation, and then you add on the scale, and then you add on the translation. That's a matter of opinion, though. On a technical level, they are being multiplied together. So let's run the game. And we are going to see the going Mary spazzing out in the middle of the room instead of in the uh, at the world origin. Oh man! All right, the uh, the One Piece crew is not having a good day right now. And that's it. If you're wondering about the matrix world constant, there are two others. Um, there are the projection matrix and the view matrix. You generally don't need to worry about those. Those have to do with the camera. The projection matrix has to deal with what the camera is looking at, and the view matrix has to do with the dimensions of the camera, the field of view, and that sort of thing. The clipping planes. Perspective versus orthographic. That's also a future video topic I want to cover someday, but we'll just leave it at that for now. And uh, at the end here, as I have not talked about matrix build identity, this resets the transformation so that anything drawn afterwards is not drawn with the transformation still applied. Hey. It's the same thing as D3D transform set identity in old versions of Game Maker. Now, I said order matters when you combine these uh, these transformations together, and if I didn't actually say that, because now that I think about it, I don't think I actually said that. Uh, order matters. As with the old D3D transformation functions, you want to do scaling and rotating before you do translation, because things will always be scaled and rotated about the world axis. To demonstrate what will happen if you uh, if you do those in the wrong order, I will first take the translation matrix and multiply the rotation matrix against it, and then for matrix final, I will take the uh, the scale matrix and multiply that against it. No, I won't. I'm going to do rotation last instead because scaling is going to make things extremely weird and uh, rather hard to make out what's going on. So let's go with that. And let's run the game, and this is going to look a little bit scary. Okay, you know what? Let's start with making things simple and set the uh, the scale to 111. Let's have the scale not change. There it is. Okay. It took me a while to find it. As you can see, it's rotating around. This point is the world origin right here in the middle of the screen where my cursor is. It's rotating around that point because scale and transformation is always applied to the world origin which is why you want to apply your translation last. God, I guess you could say that's how they got to and from Skypea, I guess. I need to make a new model to make these tutorial videos with, I'm sorry. Anyway, those are the transformation matrices. They're not too complicated. Like I said earlier, thank God the computer does the actual math for you because I never really liked matrix math in, in high school. As usual, if you want my code, downloads in the video description, although there's not a terribly large amount of it this time. My name is Dragonite. I'm going to try to do these more than like once a year now. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later.